Hi, I'm John Joanna, and welcome to Ridgeway Butchery. Hi, uh, welcome again to Ridgeway Butchery. Today we're going to be cutting up a lamb. As you can see, this is a super lamb, South African lamb, beautiful, A2. Once again, I always say that uh, it's arrogant to say that South African meat is the best, but we're going to struggle to find better lamb than this anywhere in the world. Um, fats is not that much and the meat to bone ratio is beautiful. You'll see this when we cut it, that there's a very little bit of fat, lots of meat and it's a beautiful lamb. So today out of the lamb we're going to get the legs of lamb um, and once again I'm going to cut it the way we like to cut it in, at Ridgeway Butchery. I've watched a lot of guys on YouTube and what they do is they cut it with a knife overseas. In South Africa it's not practical because as I said before in one of my previous videos, bulk buying is very very popular here. So if I'm going to cut this with a knife, it's going to take me quite a while. Month in when people get paid, they want to walk in, they want to buy a whole lamb. Uh, so we cut it on the band saw. So it literally takes us 5 to 10 minutes to cut it and pack it as the customer wants. From this lamb we're going to get the legs of lamb. Uh, we're going to debone the one. We'll get chunk chops, we'll get the loin chops, rib chops, and then from the shoulder, we'll make a stew, and we'll make the neck. We'll also make it into, into a stew, and then we'll have the ribs. Um, there's lots of different ways to cut a lamb. This is how we like to cut it for Ridgeway Butchery. Again, at my butchery, what's very important is as little waste as possible. Firstly, because we are running a business, you don't want waste. And secondly, it's food. Um, we just don't want to waste food and over my years of working in the butchery I found this is the most effective way to cut it both for the customer and for the butchery. So what I'm going to do today is as I said earlier I'm going to cut the lamb like we cut it at Ridgeway Butchery. If you're going to buy a whole lamb this is the best way to cut it and even if, even if we're not going to cut this for a whole lamb I want to show you guys how to cut the lamb and how we display it at Ridgeway Butchery. So we're going to take this whole lamb, like we did in the previous video, cut it up and display it as if we're selling it over the counter here. Okay. First thing we got is the legs of lamb. Um, when we sell a whole lamb, I always, uh, a leg of lamb is always a must for me. It's a nice piece of meat if you have family over if you have uh, a nice Sunday lunch so um, we keep one leg always for a roast so that's what we're going to do now we're just going to cut it for a roast. Second leg I'm going to leave the shank hole because that's also always nice for a roast. So we're going to keep it like that and then we're going to debone this. We're going to debone it, we're going to net it a lot of people like the roast without a bone, so that's what we're going to do. I very much like a lot of my meat with the bone. I believe that the bone gives the meat flavor, but uh, a lot of customers like us to take out the bone. So that's what we're going to do with this leg of lamb. We're just going to remove this top side bone as we call it. So once we've removed that we're just going to cut along the bone. Always there's a little bone here which we just remove like that. And we've got our bones there and we have our debone leg of lamb here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open it a little bit here and sort of butterfly it and the reason we do this is because we're going to spice it on the inside and on the outside because the, a lot of times the meat cooks from within out we want spicing on the inside and the outside but what we're going to do is we're going to put a different spice on the inside and on the outside and that mix once it's cooked comes out beautifully. We have a spice which is homemade 
Actually, they're both homemade by my mother. This, we just call it a Greek spice. It's a mix of salt, pepper, and oregano. And we're just gonna sprinkle it on the inside. Okay, inside of the lamb, a little bit more. Just make sure it gets in nicely there. And you can see from the texture and the color of this lamb that it was a young man and it's gonna be beautiful and tender. Don't wanna to put too much of the spice because it is salt based. And if you put too much, it's gonna to be too salty. That's about enough. And we turn it around, and get another one of my mother's speciality, which is the barbecue spice. We just sprinkle that on top. The labeling on the lamb, I never really take it off. Uh, people are concerned, they think it's ink. It's actually made from vegetables. It's like a vegetable paint. Obviously non-toxic, and there's no need to remove it. If the customer wants it removed, I will remove it. So now you have the two different spices on the inside and the outside. We're gonna roll it like that. Just a little bit more here. And that's a beautiful deep bone leg. We are now just gonna net it. Let's take the netting. You just buy something like this from the hardware, pipe, very simple. Throw the lamp in, pull it out. And you have your deboned leg of lamb, spiced, ready to be roasted. Um, I find lamb is naturally fatty, so I never add any sort of oil to it. It cooks in its own oil. What I do recommend is a little bit of fresh lemon when it's ready. Just take the fresh lemon and squeeze it over. As we said, the, uh, the spices are salt based. You don't want to put too much. That's ready to be put into the oven. So uh, those are the shoulder chops. Uh, we cut them until they get to the rib chop part, which we'll get to later. That's my favorite part, but let's cut these shoulder chops and display them in the, in the display tray as we go through. These are shoulder chops. In South Africa, they're known as shoulder or bra chops. You can see they get progressively bigger. And we just stack them on top of each other like that. You have one tray with your shoulder or bra chops. Next we're going to cut the rib chops. These are very, very popular with the restaurants. Um, always a little bit of kidney fat. We'll get to the kidney fat later. I said in a previous video, kidney fat for me is the worst fat because it's dry, so we try to take it off. And we'll just trim that palm bone. As you can see earlier, I said A2 lamb, you can look at that meat to bone ratio is superb, very little fat. And I always tell my staff, if you want to sell something, display it nicely and you will sell it. And rib chops actually display beautifully. I'm just going to throw them into the tray like this, like we would display them at Ridgeway. Next we're going to take another piece of the lamb, which they also in South Africa's commonly refer, they refer to as uh, bra chops. Um, it is the chop chop. We're going to separate it from the loin chops. We're just going to cut through and I'll separate it. So these are the chop chops. We, um, we don't like the kidney fat, so the kidney fat we're going to take off. It's a dry fat. I've never liked the kidney fat. Also referred to, once again, like the shoulder chops in South Africa as bra chops. A lovely chop again. I'm going to take off the fat and you'll see once I slice it what a nice chop this does make. So, 
just going to remove that kidney fat. Very simple. This kidney fat here. Take that off. There we go. And it leaves us with a bit of a charm bone here, which I like to take off on both sides and we'll slice it. Once it's sliced, you will see what a nice brown chop this does. It's actually the first couple of slices on the chop are my favorite. Um, and let's just slice it so we can see. Absolutely love these machines in South Africa. I see in Europe and in the States, I hardly ever use them. Uh, that's where the real art of butchery comes in, when they will cut up a lamb with just a knife. It amazes me, but in South Africa, we use these all the time. There's your chum chops ready to go, a beautiful brown chop. Next thing we're going to take off is the rib, the lamb ribs. Have never ever been a popular cut. In the old days always struggled to sell this cut. But uh, I walked into a butchery one day and I saw how they were cutting it. Beautiful, beautiful cut a couple of years ago and it has become very, very popular. So we're going to take the two whole ribs off and I'm going to show you how we cut it. There's your ribs. I'm not going to say it again. Actually, I am a beautiful lamb. And we're going to cut it with a knife to make a driblets. Driblets are very versatile, raw, fried, grill them. Very much like a chop. We take the whole rib, we cut it in between the bones, and we get absolutely beautiful riblets. Let's just cut the two and we will display them as we display them at the drain. As I say, it has become a very popular cut. In the old days, always struggled to get rid of the ribs. These days, we cannot get enough of this barbecue riblet. There we go, both the ribs cut into riblets. We'll put them into the tray. And once again, display them how we can sell them in the butcher here. This one, we can sell it plain like that, or we can take the barbecue spice and spice it. So, those are the barbecue ribs. At the butchery, we give the customer the choice. If he wants them spiced, we spice them. But generally, we sell them like that. It is up to the customer to ask us if they want them, if they want us to spice them or not. Very popular, especially in summer, when people are barbecuing or frying, as we say, in South Africa. The loin chops, also once again very very popular with the restaurants. Take off all the skinny fats on one side. These are the mini T bones. If you have a look at the shape of these loin chops, it's exactly like a T bone as you would get on the beef. And a lot of customers come in and when they ask for the loin, they want the mini T bones. Once again, you can look at these chops. They are absolutely beautiful. They have the fillet, the sirloin, little T-bones in lamb. I always leave a little bit of the shoulder because it's a difficult part to sell this piece here. Let me just cut it and you can see. Very difficult piece to sell because it's really a lot of bone and a lot of fat. So I'll leave it on the shoulder. A lot of people will cut it right through, but then you're stuck with this. So what I try to do is mix this in with the meaty part of the shank so that the customer will get nice knuckles with a bit of the top of the shoulder. But what I do do is I always trim it off. So you will see when I cut it, I'm going to remove a lot of that fat, a lot of that sinew, and I'm going to mix the shoulder tops with the lamb shanks. 
take off all the fat so the customer doesn't buy that fat. It is high, you're going to display the meat, so you've got to mix it in. Some beautiful knuckles there, and we're going to take the top of the shoulder, mix it in. And this is lovely for stews and curries. A lot of meat is very seasonal. Now that we're in the middle of winter, this stuff is very, very popular. Chops less so. As you can see, we take the shoulder heads and we mix it in between. And there's your shoulder. All of it cut for stew. So from the whole lamb, basically what we're left with is the neck. Once again, curries and stew. And the rib tips, the, the ends of the ribs which we've cut off, because these are all gristle and bone, so we couldn't cut through them with a knife, so we cut them off with a bandsaw. But these surprisingly are also very, very popular in winter. This unfortunately is a very seasonal piece of lamb. In summer we struggle to sell this, so we'll debone it and we'll sell uh, we'll make a, a lamb sausage with the meat and we'll sell the lamb bones. But in winter, luckily, people uh, make a lot of curries, a lot of stew, so we just slice it into a stew, which we'll mix with the neck. So the neck is a lovely piece of meat for stews and curries. In the last tray, we're going to put the neck and the rib tips, which as you can see, are also very nice in a stew or a curry. They are a little bit bony, that's why the price of these are always cheaper than the rest of the lamb. So that's your neck and your ribs. So as you've seen, we've taken that whole lamb, we have processed it, cut it into the chops and into the stew, and this is basically what's left. Now, if we had to throw this away, we'd close up the tree down, we'd be making no profit. It needs to get processed. Um, again, very seasonal. Bones, always popular. Lamb bones, always popular in winter. Struggle to sell them in summer. But what we do do is we have the planks that goes into a mutton ball, so a mutton sausage, a lamb sausage. The bones, once again, we're going to put them here. The fat, believe it or not, we do also process it. So we're going to separate the fat here. We throw very, very little away here at Ridgeway Butchery. Kidneys, lamb kidneys, very popular, so we keep the kidneys. And when we have a few, we pack them, or we can make steak and kidney with them. But there's a lot of meat here which you don't see, which can go into a sausage. So what we do is we take the pieces and we simply debone them. We take the meat off the bone. Once again, nothing wrong with that lamb. It will go into a lamb sausage. The bone there, the fat, the fat. So we basically just separate the meat so that the guys at the back know what to do. We've cut it up, that's all going to go into a lamb sausage, also relatively popular in South Africa. That we will process it, that we'll cut it up for steak and kidney or we'll pack it individually, we'll see what the shop requires. And these in winter we have absolutely no problem selling them. Lamb bones, meaty beef bones in winter are very very popular. So that's our lamb done.